Hey, first grade art friends, it's Mrs. Herbe. This week, we're going to start something really exciting. Uh, we're going to start talking about how to draw dinosaurs that we are going to put into the cities that we've been working on for the past couple weeks. I know a lot of you really love dinosaurs, so I hope this is going to be a really fun thing for you guys. So before we start to talk about drawing dinosaurs, I want to talk about an important art word called scale. And I'm not talking about the scale that you hop onto when you go get a physical at the doctor's office that tells the doctor how much you weigh. The type of scale that I'm talking about refers to the size of an object in relation to another object. So for example, it would we would be comparing dinosaurs to, let's say, our house. We would we would be comparing the size of, a, of the dinosaur to the size of a house. So that is what scale is. It allows us to put two things together and kind of compare their, their sizes in relation to one another. And it kind of helps give us an idea of the size of the objects that we're trying to talk about. So without further ado, um, let's look at our first dinosaur. So I was able to find some measurements of some of the dinosaurs that you guys might be familiar with. And Brachiosaurus is the first dinosaur that we're going to look at. Now Brachiosaurus was 30 feet tall. So that means this head is about 10 feet taller than your average house. So Brachiosaurus could probably is standing 10 feet higher than your house. And also to maybe put it in um, perspective, a really tall tree, for example, an oak tree can grow to be 40 feet tall. So Brachiosaurus is about 10 feet shorter than a really tall tree, but it's still really, really tall. So if you go out into your neighborhood and kind of look at one of the really tall trees, think about that tower kind of over your house. Brachiosaurus is probably about that tall or was that tall. Now, Brachiosaurus is almost three times as long as it is tall. Um, it is 85 feet long. And so let's try to think, put that in perspective and think about it in relationship to some other things that you guys know about. So if we think about, um, you guys all know when you're driving around on the highway, you might a tractor trailer might go whizzing by you, okay? And tractor trailers are pretty big. Typical tractor trailers are about 53 feet in length. So it would be like putting together a tractor trailer and like two minivans a little bit to give you an idea. That is how long Brachiosaurus is. So that's really pretty long, okay? And you can kind of see also the scale of Brachiosaurus in relationship to this man who is positioned underneath his belly. And you can see that the the just the belly of Brachiosaurus is probably 10 feet tall, which is uh, the 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 start of Brachiosaurus's belly is like as probably as tall as like an elephant. So it, it's really really pretty tall. Um, so this dinosaur was huge. All right. Now let's think about the next dinosaur. So T-Rex or Tyrannosaurus rex was not nearly as tall as Brachiosaurus. T-Rex is about 18 feet tall, which is around eight typical houses are 18 to 20 feet tall. So um, houses that have two stories, a, a first floor and a second floor. So T-Rex is, was as tall as probably think about your house if you have a two-story house. And again, T-Rex is, is about a little more than double um, his height in length. So T-Rex is 40 feet in length. All right. And again, if we think about a tractor trailer, that's 53 feet in length, T-Rex is about 13 feet uh, shorter than that as far as how long he is from head to tail, um, but still pretty long. He's probably about as long as two elephants. So when you go to the zoo and you see one elephant, 
T-Rex is probably about as long as two elephants put together. All right, so still really, really big. If we look at the size of T-Rex's foot, T-Rex's foot, the top of his foot is about as tall as a typical guy it looks here. And so let's say six feet, six foot is maybe an average um, height of a man. So the top of T-Rex is just his foot is as big as as tall as a person. All right, let's look at our next dinosaur, Stegosaurus. Now Stegosaurus is kind of interesting because Stegosaurus's head is down here, which is about the same height as this man. So Stegosaurus's head is not very tall. We could probably, if you were, if you grow up and you grow up to be about six feet tall, you could probably um, pet Stegosaurus maybe on the top of its head if you could reach it. But Stegosaurus, if you look up here at the total height of his whole body as it kind of curves up here, it's 13 feet tall. And that's about as tall as an elephant. So if we think about Stegosaurus um, in terms of the size of an elephant, he's about the same size as an elephant with a little bit longer of a tail because a typical elephant is about 21 feet long. So Stegosaurus is a little bit longer than your typical elephant, but still really pretty big. Let's look at Parasolophilus. Um, so Parasolophilus is about 12 feet high, which again is about a little less than um, as high as a dinosaur, right? Or excuse me, as an elephant. Um, but if we look at it, the height of his head in relationship to a, a tall, a six foot tall man, is his head starts up a little bit higher than um, Stegosaurus's head. And his body goes up all the way up here to this curve to about 12 feet. So about a little bit, give or take the size as tall as an elephant. Now, Parasolophilus, though, is longer. He's 33 feet long. So he is about, I would say, if you put two minivans, if you have a minivan, um, if you put two minivans side next to each other, um, he's Parasolophilus is about as long as two minivans. So there's like minivan number one, minivan number two. So he's still pretty, pretty long if we think about how um, how he how big he is in relation to ship to other things in our world. Now another favorite is Triceratops, and again Triceratops is a little bit like Stegosaurus, where the um, top of his head is around the height of um, a grown-up man who's about six feet tall. But the top of his head then and his body spans up to about 10 feet tall, which means that Triceratops could probably fit inside um, the bottom of the deep end of a swimming pool. Um, and so if, if Triceratops went swimming, he, he could get all the way under, um, but he'd be just about as big as the deep end um, at a typical swimming pool. But again, he's a little bit more than double his... Um, length, his length is about double his height, even a little bit more. Um, and again, if we think about that 26 feet, um, he's a little bit shorter than two minivans back to back. So again, pretty big, right? Um, depending on the size of your house, um, Triceratops also might be able to squeeze into nice size living room if the if the ceiling was 10 feet tall and the room was 26 feet long. I think my living room, the ceiling is not 10 feet. It's about nine feet, but my, maybe it's about 20. So he could almost squeeze into Mrs. Herbay's living room. And it sounds really huge, um, but it's not super, super huge, but he could take up the size of like a big room in a house. All right. So let's start to think about drawing dinosaurs. Now, I will not be with you um, like I typically would be at school, but what I want you guys to think about is to draw most of the dinosaurs that we are going to be thinking about drawing. We are going to think about first the 
shape of an oval, right? And when, if you think back earlier this year, when we drew birds, we talked about birds, we talked about starting with a slice of watermelon, right? So for, stego, for, for the dinosaurs though, we're gonna start with an oval. And later on, um, I'm gonna, in the video that I show you how to draw dinosaurs, we're gonna just practice drawing some ovals, right? So if you can draw an oval, you can draw a dinosaur because then after we draw this oval, then we can just add the head depending on where the head is, right? So here for the stegosaurus, we would put the head right here like this and it's just a curved line around. And then same thing, then we would add the tail. It would kind of connect back here. We could add all of the the spikes, and then we would just add the legs. So it's really not as difficult as we think if we think about it in terms of starting first with that oval. The other thing we also want to think about is the angle of the oval. So for a stegosaurus, who's sort of just facing um, here, he's facing to the right, we would want to tilt that oval with it a little bit higher at the top and lower at the bottom. Let's take a look at another dinosaur. Here is Triceratops, and Triceratops is another dinosaur that's popular that I'm sure you guys might like to try to draw. And again, here is the oval for its body. Then we would just add the tail at the end on this side. And then for, this, for the um, Triceratops head, what I would probably do is just draw this part of the head first, and then we would just add this little um, curve line. Or we could actually draw the curve line first, and then add the head, and then all the other details. But we're gonna talk about how to do that when I show you the, um, the drawing part of this lesson in the video. But again, this oval for Triceratops is not tilted quite as much. It's maybe a little bit higher towards the back of his um, back, and a little bit lower towards the front of its head, but it's not tilted quite as much as um, Stegosaurus. And then we have our friend T-Rex, and T-Rex is also an oval or any other type of dinosaur that stands only on its back two legs. And again, here is the oval for its body, and then T-Rex just has little arms that come out from this part of his chest, and then again, we just have the head here at the front, we've got the tail in the back, and then we just have one leg and two legs. So really not too bad if we're thinking about drawing the dinosaurs in terms of starting with an oval. Um, for the T-Rex, the oval is a little bit higher by his head, whereas the front part of the oval is higher than the back part of the oval. We tilt it a little bit because T-Rex um, is his body, his head is a little bit higher than this back part here. And last but not least, I found a picture of Brachiosaurus, kind of like we talked about um, at the beginning of the lesson. And again, there's still just our basic oval, um, but in this case, this guy has a really, really long neck, right? So if we can draw a nice curved long line, you're going to be able to draw this dinosaur. And then we're just gonna do another um, really nice long tail at the end on the back part of the oval. So the tail attaches at the back, the head at the front, and then we have four legs. So I hope this makes drawing dinosaurs a little bit easier, easier for you. Um, and I cannot wait to see um, the dinosaurs that you decide to draw. So I'll give you a little bit further instruction when you watch the video, but I hope this PowerPoint was a good start to understanding how to draw dinosaurs.